Hi guys, James here. Hope you're well. It's Saturday afternoon. Um, nice, nice sunny day here in Buckinghamshire, which is quite good considering it's the middle of September. Um, so thank you for all the lovely comments I've had on the Nimitz Part 7 video I posted yesterday. Um, can't believe it's Part 7. It's long overdue, obviously, but uh, yeah, she's coming along. Um, and a few of the comments actually requesting a bit more information about how I'm planning to light this kit. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit um, into the next video, but I'll show you quickly now how I'm going to do that. Right, so here's the innards of the Nimitz. Um, basically what I've done is taken some plastic card, as you can see here, made into three separate sections, a front, a middle, and a rear. Um, they're all sort of semi-carefully measured, uh, making sure they're the right width. There's a few little corners you need to cut, especially back on this bit at the stern here, just to make it fit, because it bends and bows a little bit. But essentially it's one big rectangle. I did it in thirds just to have a bit more uh, flexibility and uh, precision of the cuts. Um, gave it a dry fit, fitted, so went ahead and stuck a few more serious pieces of slightly thicker plastic card on as sort of supporting bridges and glued all those together um, so it's nice and stiff basically, which is good. Um, so there's lots of different ways you can light a kit. Um, you can have an advanced electronics degree from MIT, you can get a few LEDs, some wire and a few resistors, learn Ohm's law, um, get out the soldering iron, um, buy some solder and set up a little station and start doing that. Or, as you can do what I did, cheat. Um, thankfully technology has moved on quite a bit since I last lit a kit and um, LEDs in sort of very useful length strips have become available. So basically what I've got here is this little faint line you can see underneath is the backing of an adhesive strip. So if we turn this over, you can see what it is. So the flickering you're probably seeing is just a camera thing. It's a solid light in real life. But basically this is a LED strip. So it comes, it's sort of waterproof backing on the top, right at the top here, underneath the LEDs, and you peel off a piece of uh, sticky back plastic on the back, and it leaves a sticky pad, which you stick in. All of these copper coloured areas are where you can cut, if you wanted to, to sort of cut to fit. So the actual piece I got was a metre long. This is not This is probably 60% of that from one side over to the other. Um, so cut it here, and I've got the spare left over. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. It basically runs off this little little, little unit here. So it's a um, adapter. And there was two on offer. One was a sort of straight um, battery pack, or one which I thought was a bit more useful is a USB connection. So that sort of runs off here. And here you go. What I'm doing is sort of cut a hole in the Nimitz that goes straight through to the bottom of the hole, and then this lead goes all the way in to the MacBook Pro back there. So all you need to do is um, get yourself one of these sets, basically. So it's a USB controller, and um, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, it comes with this little basic but um, funky little controller here that gives you different colour options, a brightness, a dim, and some auto settings. So this is on the red, so if we sort of set it onto white, it's quite bright, but you can turn it down. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do it on live. Let's see. It does take its time, so it works better at night, as you might imagine. Then you've also got uh, red, you can put it onto flash, otherwise known as uh, disco party mode or rave aboard an aircraft carrier. Strobe, sort of brighten slowly and then darken slowly, which is quite interesting. Fade, just fades from one colour to the next, I think. So we're going from the green, the blue, what's the next bit of purple? And then mint and mint to red. All right, um, and then smooth is just a full on one to another color. So, yeah, that's basically the way I've sort of decided to uh, get myself around it. So, basically, why waste a load of time and effort if you don't necessarily need to? This whole set cost about six pounds, so it's nothing really, it's a lot uh, less than even just buying a soldering iron. So, that's how I'm going to light this fella. Um, so, yeah, the next steps is just to put the aircraft in there, glue them all down, and then seal down this uh, sort of temporary flight deck. I think I'm probably going to put a bit more detail on it, actually, the more I think about it, because what I want to do is 
mask off the individual LED lights, these sort of squares here as you can see, mask them off and then put in some sort of piping all across the top here and just sort of that sort of, I've got some T-bar um, styrene strip and maybe even some spare wire, just bits and pieces basically sort of add a bit more detail um, and then sort of spray it and sort of make it, uh, I might not give it a wash because it's going to be on the ceiling, you're really not going to be able to see it too much but just to add a bit more je ne sais quoi to it um, and then seal that down like thus and then slowly but surely start sticking down the massive flight deck starting back here and working my way forward so there you go folks pretty easy highly recommend you um, bend the rules don't waste too much money on things you don't necessarily need to have uh, in the arsenal for future builds unless you really want to um, but I would recommend getting one of these little sets and uh, making life a bit easier for yourself so there's lots of different ways obviously of lighting a ship this is a good way there are others but it'd be great to hear what you think so thanks for watching and uh, yeah make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with the limits all right take care bye